Good middle of the day, everybody. It's me, Young Cook, and today we're going to transform our witch bar. Every single move that we're going to make over there is not only going to add to the farm, but also kind of be some other farms too. Oh, Bonzo, I can't believe him. It's taken about a month's time, but yes, yes, believe it or not, Project Hollow. It concludes for once and for all today in this episode right here. Yeah, that's right. The beautiful spider farm that we built, the amethyst geode farm we built last episode, and of course the witch farm, a place we'll be adding over to very, very soon. <sighs> that's Project Hollow. That was so fun. So today's episode is definitely a continuation, basically a part two of this episode right here. If you haven't seen it quite yet, well, what are you doing? How dare you not see it? You skip episodes of the series? Ex what? No, that's all wrong. If you want today's episode to make sense, you should probably check that first. But I guess you don't have to. So in between episodes, I spent a little bit of time at our brand new Amethyst Geode Farm. This thing is so beautiful to me. I'm in awe of what we created together in that episode. Like, it's a gigantic geode. It's what I've always dreamed of when it comes to an Amethyst Farm, and <laughs> it's so wonderful. In between episodes, I also did a quick harvest of my lava farm and went all the way over to the resource Sandy Desert. You see, I had but no option to get a little bit of sand for our very first, our very long-awaited, much-delayed, super-anticipated, extremely, extremely noisy, what in the world is wrong with that farm? The first upgrade of the day, though, there's no option. Amethyst glass, at a long last. I will be the first to admit that the very first upgrade we'll be making to the farm today, technically speaking, does not improve the rates, but it'll be beautiful. Now, another thing that I'd like to set up over here inside of this swamp today is going to actually be, believe it or not, but a couple slime farm. Very, very simple ones, but slime farm for sure. In order to pull that off, I'm actually going to need a little bit of pumpkin, and yes, yes, I had a feeling I'd be able to find some of this easily. I don't know about you, but hands down, I definitely feel like pumpkins and, and melons specifically, they're so cool. Minecraft needs more crops that are like harvested kind of like these things, like solid blocks or something. What in the world could it be, though? Well, I have no ideas. Well, that's okay, because look, I uh, guess in a way, that puts me as the exact same position as all of the Minecraft developers. For like 10 years now. It's only been a couple episodes now, but I can't remember if I mentioned in the episode that we would be coming back and doing this, but yes, yes, here we are. We're gonna go ahead and make this whole area essentially the Swamp Outpost. Now, when it comes to the Swamp Outpost, I need a good name for the Swamp Outpost. After all, every good base needs a good name. And so just like that, I would like to give my co-host the honor of announcing a contest. The Swamp Outpost, an area that I think we're actually gonna probably end up coming back to a little bit later on and add even more, even more to it. It needs a proper name. Just like we've done before with other name contests, the number one comment, most like comment down below this video, right here, right now, whatever that name ends up being, you guys have all the control. Whatever that name is, will be the name of the Swamp Place forever. You guys have not let me down yet with any crazy names, so <laughs> let's keep that energy going. So the first big major upgrade that I like to talk about and that have been taken on for a second here is trees. All around this farm, there are trees. Technically speaking, the trees are okay. Like the tree itself did nothing wrong. However, the tree itself, if bad mobs spawn at nighttime, which, which unfortunately from testing this thing out, you know how it goes when you're AFK and you're like half paying attention. Uh, well, I thought I lit it up really, really good, but I didn't. If I'm just a little bit late to sleeping and mobs begin to spawn, then I catch it and I roll it over to daytime. Will these trees become a safe haven for every single bad mob? Which is not good. Great news is the solution to this one. The fix is really straightforward and it'll give me supplies too. Because of the positioning of our AFK spot above the witch farm, if I were to say go out, I don't know, a couple chunks from the witch farm and take out every single tree, I think there's like three chunks, we should be good. Because I still somehow mysteriously have yet to build a vine farm, I don't know how that happened, I'm gonna go ahead and collect as many vines as possible too. I really have no clue how that happened. That's so weird. Ha, ah, sugar cane, sugar cane, sweet, sweet, wonderful sugar cane. While chopping on some of these trees, I've seen to have stumbled upon a patch of wild sugar cane. I can't believe this. Speaking of farms that I don't have quite yet, I can't believe that I don't have in the entire duration of this world, almost 500 episodes now. <clears throat> Excuse me, 500 days. 500 days in game in the world. 500 episodes, that would be a... 
That would be terrifying if it hadn't happened yet, but sugarcane farm. So between us, you and I here, Project Hollow, it was a really, really fun project for me, at least in this world. I really like the opportunity to finally build a witch farm after only like a million years. Also, setting up the whole nether transport system is not maybe like the most thrilling project in the world, but it sets us up for success later on. Like, I mean, in between episodes when I had to travel over to get sand, it was such a nice breeze. I liked how we did Project Hollow and the idea of like grouping a bunch of different kind of random projects into one solid, hopefully semi-cohesive idea. I have no clue what project we'll end up doing next, but I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed the whole idea, the concept of Project Talo. I was a little bit nervous to kick it off in case, like, I don't know, you guys just didn't like any of it or whatever. I'm grateful. It all went pretty smoothly, though. Zero deaths intact, and it was pretty good. We made a lot of great progress to the world. The side note, I know this is, like, the silliest thing in the world, and I don't even like birch trees, but I feel terrible about chopping these old, ancient growth birch trees down. Like, these things have been here for potentially millennium, all the way until... Well, now that I think about it, it's not me chopping them down, it's street shoppers. How dare he? Oh no, that is so sad. The wandering trader, I just noticed that it despawned over here. Oh man. Now, while running around and chopping trees over here, I've been scanning the ground relentlessly and mercilessly for any sign of a cave. Fortunately, for me today, I haven't found a single cave on the surface other than almost this thing right here. Now, I could probably guarantee that if I were to swim to the bottom of this ravine and dig out a couple blocks, it'll probably spill into a normal cave, but that's not really a big deal because that gets pretty far away from the AFK spot all the way up in the air. Just in case you built this witch farm and you haven't yet, if you have any obvious surface caves, you need to light them up, and as for the rest of the surface, you definitely want to make sure that's lit up. I I think this is far enough away, like in relation to the AFK spot and everything, that I shouldn't really have to worry about it, but I think for this, it's going to be a little bit of trial and error. At some point, we'll AFK in today's episode, and I'll see if mobs are popping up. Aha! I knew I would find one eventually, or almost kind of, maybe, eh, kind of. One whole bunch of tree chopping later in <laughs> wood, birch wood, oak wood, I'm set. Next up, glass, <laughs> a little bit more specifically, the amethyst dark tinted version of glass. This stuff literally duplicates, it's beautiful. Alright, so for this next part, that's gonna have to just go. I can't take it anymore, but Amethyst Glass. Amethyst Glass is not only one of my favorite building blocks in the entire game, but when it comes to a crafting recipe, it's one of my favorite things as well. I mean, it's like, I get it. You take the Amethyst Shards, put them inside of the crafting table, so it's not really like duplicating blocks or nothing like that, but as far as I'm concerned, it duplicates the glass. The rest doesn't matter. When I had initially built this farm, I saw so many warm comments about the beautiful glass all over the front. I feel like today, there's a solid chance of me seeing even more beautiful comments about the beautiful glass on the front that doesn't let any light in at all because it's tinted glass and... I mean, it's, it's perfection. Now, I've always dreamt of glass on the front of the farm, but I always dreamt of it on the back of the farm as well. Uh, right above where these trap doors go. I don't know about you, but I feel like this right back there... Like, that makes it look pretty cool, too. And finally here, last and definitely not least, the other spot that I've always dreamt of Amethyst Glass being on this farm is up on top of it. Because we're gonna put tinted glass all over the top of this thing, we don't need to worry about light anymore. Glass is not a spawnable block. That means these ugly, horrible torches, those old things, I can get rid of them forever. Whether it's, say, something locational, like a witch farm, or just, like, your basic mob farm that you could build in the air over at your base, a tinted glass, in my opinion, is an absolute must. Like, not only does the tinted glass look really cool, but if you had to, like, troubleshoot your farm, make sure it's actually working, I mean, tinted glass is literally perfect for it. So for this next part of the build today, imagine this. We want to use the AFK witch farm. So we slide over to the nether, ride down that super ice highway, go into the portal, and then, boom, we're over at the witch farm. Let's say maybe we entered the witch farm zone all the way up at the AFK spot. Well, that would mean that the witch farm is active immediately. Like as soon as I make it over here. 
by building my portal all the way up here in the air. My farm will be active as soon as I enter the portal and go to the overworld, and mobs will never have the opportunity to spawn down low. Now, uh, the clouds. The clouds are so annoying. They were kind of messing up my view when I was trying to AFK everything like that. I think what I want to maybe do is build the floor of this platform, like sitting right there, which means the nether portal base is going to sit a little bit higher up. In a second here, after we fix this portal, I'll go ahead and come back in and raise the platform up and everything like that. But portal, portal, please, Link, please be perfect immediately. Oh, you're perfect immediately. As long as I don't break this portal ever, which th that'll be a rule. As long as I never break this portal, I think theoretically it should hopefully link back up perfectly. Wow. Aha, every single time. Sky Bordel, Sky Bordel. The next move today oh, is pretty simple. We're gonna go ahead and transform this whole Sky AFK platform and make it the true home away from home. Still using this exact spot right here as the center. What if maybe instead of like three blocks out or whatever we went, what if we say double it and go eight blocks out from that spot there? Scaffolding, scaffolding, sweet scaffolding. Oh no, I don't have any bamboo over here, which means I'm gonna need to go over there. I'm just like a couple blocks of <sighs> scaffolding short. Ah, dang it. Uh, however, though, uh, one thing I noticed from way high up in the air looking down is how close I am all the way to the water. Uh, if I felt like going like really overachiever, I could pull out all of these trees. Bamboo, bamboo. I'll take a little bit and leave the bottom so you can regrow. No, also, I want to think in maybe a little bit more style this time up at the AFK platform. The cobblestone braces on the edge to, like, stop me from falling, whatever, they work. But maybe we could make something that matches the farm's aesthetic a little bit more. And speaking of match the farm's aesthetic a little bit more, blue flower, blue flower. I knew I saw some. I would like to do blue flowers, but those are, like, the only ones I can find. What? Like, looking around inside of this big swamp here, how are those? No, there's more over there. I think we can do it. Maybe I'll even just find spider at nighttime. Blue flowers, blue flowers. I know you're trembling. It's dark at nighttime. Don't worry, don't worry. Your father, your papa, me. I got you. I'll keep you safe. And so now it's back to the safety of my own swamp park. Oh, we do a little bit more work up here at the top of the farm. I would like to reminisce a little bit of nostalgic, so sentimental for this world, Aww. but also the brand's new world that if you didn't see yet, <laughs> yeah, new series, more episodes. So far in this world, approaching episode number 50, getting so close at this point, I, I can't lie, I, I gotta say that I feel like, and maybe this is like recency bias or whatever you want to call it, but I'm really, really genuinely proud of this world, the pacing of the series so far, and all of the projects that we've gotten done. Out of the projects that we've taken on in this world, I feel like there's a lot of unique and different ones and different topics that we've talked about. After all, this is the guide series. I also feel like those first 21 episodes or whatever it was, chapter one was like perfectly timed and flowed like exactly through Minecraft's early game. So I'm super proud of that. Approaching episode number 50 and wrapping up Operation Hollow. And at the same time, in real life, like that fall vibe. And lately I've been trying to do new things. That's kind of why I made the Instagram and everything like that. I, I don't know. I just, I'm in my feels. Now, when it comes to that juicy brand new series, don't worry. I've seen some questions about it. I don't know if I ever left it in the episode, but no, it's not going to affect this series at all. I'm still going to try and get two episodes a week of this series out and hopefully like one a week of the other series out as well. In the other series, the point is not really like explaining and breaking down and knowledge wise a bunch of farms and more so just like checking out the new updates, being a little bit more chaotic. You know how it goes. It was at this point in the build today that I realized, though, that I done messed up. I messed up real bad. I was moving the platform in hopes of getting out of the way of the cloud, and I moved it too high. If you move the AFK platform too high, instead of mobs getting taken out, they just despawn. Or never even spawn. Bruh. I need to lower it all back down. A little bit of correctional work later and I've done it. The brand new AFK platform is not only big, but it's also low key kind of beautiful. I did a little bit of a swamp colored flower glass all around in here in a ring. Then I got the staircases on the side to cap off the side. 
I notice from up here, if I am patient and I give it enough time, every once in a while I can see the witch farm run a little bit. It's real awkward that it's not right now. I, I promise, this thing is pretty efficient. Ah hi, ah hi, as soon as I say it, look at that right there. We got two witches and they're being moved down to the stream and then they're taken out by the minecart. You can see it work in action for the first time ever. It's pretty cool. You can also see the redstone light up when the witches are being moved. I sure wish the clouds weren't in my, oh, what's that, Optifine, oh, you're my best friend, my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wife. How did I forget about that with Optifine? You could actually just move the clouds if they're in your way. You didn't need to move the platform the whole time. No, no, no. Also, look at how big this portal is. It's large. <clears throat> Anyways, what I was about to say is right now the platform is real dangerous. Not very good. So I'm kind of torn here. Part of me says maybe just use slabs around the side as a ring. The other part of me says maybe take dark oak logs, flip them on their side like that, and use that as the ring. I feel like the dark oak logs might look a little bit fancier, so let's do those. Couple bit of time later and voila, we've got a fully safe ring all over the side of this thing. And for good measure, I hid torches on the outside. That'll keep the entire platform nice and bright. Not that it'll ever be a problem because while I'm up here, it's way too close for any mobs to spawn. I feel like I'm in Skyblock or something right now. <laughs> Loki Haiki kind of love it. And <laughs> now the depressing rain sets in. Of course you would set in. As soon as I'm trying to build and talk about all of my creations, I was thinking about the bed. It, it'll say sitting over here and then I'll put trap doors like this around the bed. Now it's like a proper bench or something like that. It's cozy. It's nice. I love it. It's pretty cool. Now. There are like basically two final things that I think our farm needs to be fully good. Thing number one, though it's simple, oh, but yet it's beautiful. For this thing, we need a little bit of sugar cane. Thankfully, I kind of figured I could run around here in the local environment and scavenge the sugar cane that I need. I think maybe six should be perfect. No, 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 wait a minute. What am I saying? I need eight. I am so sorry about that. Yeah, I am so sorry. That's terrible. A little checkup on the farm, and uh, ha, sure enough, the farm is definitely absolutely working while I'm up there. And oh, look at that thing from the ground. That's so cool looking. I love the circle and like the gradient of it all. <laughs> I want to expand that later. Die, Gertrude. It's so sad. Poor Gertrude. The witch, the, the former owner of this house, she truly gave it all. Her sacrifice, truly. I salute her. It will be remembered forever. She gave it all for our sweet dreams of profit. Maybe I'll build more for her and these friends a little bit later on. Thing number one, the first big thing that we need to make over here to have, just to be cool, show off, everything like that, a map. Oh, no. Ah, oh, I mean, it's fine. I can easily make more. I was hoping I'd be like dead center or something. Like on a map. Ah, oh, that's so bad. All right, so one more map it is. No big deal. One more map. I'm not sad about it. It's cool. One more map it is. We move all the way off of that map, and then boom, map number two. The entire witch farm on a map. So the map is pretty cool. I think I might actually make two more and just have this on a two-by-two two map. I'll make the map, and then I'll put it up top. But check this out. Now that it's nighttime, we can kind of see what's going to happen. Admittedly, it's unlikely that we will catch it happening because depending on the moon phase, the spawn rate of these bad boys is a little bit low, but slime. Slime can still spawn inside of the swamp at nighttime, even if it's fully lit up, kind of like it is here. Now, realistically here, we have two course of action that we could go on to get rid of all the slime spawning inside of the swamp. The first move that we could make could take place all the way down over here. This land, you see it? The slime needs block to spawn. If I wanted to, I could move around in here and remove every single block of land. Remove all the land, replace it with water, bingo, boom. There is no more slime spawning allowed inside of the swamp. But that's a really tedious, big project. I, I gotta pull this whole hill out, have this thing floating. Eh, maybe not worth it. And so, that's where option number two comes in. During the course of today's episode, I placed cactus down and I've been farming these things for a little bit of time. With the help of cactus, with the help of hoppers, and with the help of a little bit of clever design work in here, we could actually create a facility that will automatically remove every single iron golem from existence automatically. Automatically, smoothly, and easily. To create this system, we're going to start with a small ring of hoppers on the ground around this cactus. Over here, we're going to have a chest. The hoppers are all going to go into the chest. 
Now, technically, if I was really concerned about every single drop here from this contraption I'm setting off, I might want to double up on the hoppers on the outside, or maybe even adjust the design a little bit and have water currents going towards the center. But this will be fine. After that, we're going to go ahead and tower up next to the cactus. Now, we're going to want to go ahead and keep this thing nice and tall. Because if we put this farm, this little thing that I'm setting up right now, too low, then the big slime will actually be able to touch the guy in the middle. And the guy in the middle, that's not good. It's going to be a little bit mildly expensive. I don't want to have to actually, like, rebuild this thing later on. And anyways, check it. So far, here's what I've got. Ring of hoppers on the ground and a chest. Then I have three cactus placed, so it's like fully grown. If you don't have enough cactus to kick it off, no big deal. Just place one down and let it grow. Eventually, you'll be good. Then I've got a block right there, and then a half slab on top of it. This block is completely pointless, though. We don't want it there, so we'll get rid of it. We've got that half slab. Then, a little bit above that, we've got a ring of fences. Now, with this little thing that I'm placing in here, I'm trying to place it relatively center in this open area. You see, mobs, they have, like, a detection radius. If a slime were to spawn, like, say, I don't know, all the way over there on top of that hill, it'll be way too far away from this guy over here to actually see it. But if a slime were to spawn anywhere in this field and maybe on that close hill, it'll totally see the thing I'm about to put in the middle, get angry, and try and attack it. But actually end up attacking the cactus because it can't reach it up there. Ha, ah, look, long story short, what I'm going to need to do next up is tower up above this farm. Temporary block right there, we place that. Then we're going to go ahead and remove this temporary block. Main block there, main block right there, another main block right there. Make sure we're lined up with the slab. Place a pumpkin on top of it, carve the pumpkin in. I hit use, and it was the perfect climactic moment. Carve the pumpkin in. <laughs> Brand to do advancement. Hi, buddy. You're going to live here forever. Now, because I went ahead and did the work of lighting things up in here, I don't have to worry about any other hostile mobs spawning in and, like, say, attacking this thing with ranged weapons. Maybe, like, I don't know, a skeleton or something like that. We should be safe forever. I've got a little bit of supplies. What I was dreaming of, thinking of here, is maybe two more different iron golem chambers in place on the ground around this farm. I mean, look, the slime spawning at nighttime is not going to be a lot here, but it definitely will be a thing. If I could say, maybe just passively collect a little bit of slime ball as well until I can, like, say, build a slime farm in another part of this swamp. Oh, that's a beautiful sounding idea to me. Now, we need to be at least a little bit careful with where we're dropping this thing. If I were to drop this thing in a bad spot, like, let's say, right here, and then there's a hill right next to it, that'd be a big problem. The slime would be able to jump, they can jump pretty high, and hit the gulf. So we need to find, like, a, a relatively clear spot. When it comes to a relatively clear spot, I, I think I've actually got it. What I could probably do here is lower out this little bit of land right here and put it right next to the farm. That would be cool. And say maybe, I don't know, something like that spot right there. Close enough. Not too close to a hill, nothing like that. Maybe it should be good. say our final one it's gonna be a little bit more tricky i think positioning wise i could probably put it somewhere on like this hill right over here it's far enough away one thing that i will do here is to make sure the slime can actually jump up and reach the cactus i'll fill in a couple blocks around this thing so they're like uneven ground with this little contraption you know so last but not least the final iron golem for today the king of the operation himself there you go buddy Keeping it 100 over here, I know that these iron golems are not going to attract every single slime that spawns in the swamp. Like, over here, it's just going to be kind of like a dead zone or whatever. But I think maybe having three stations around it, it'll at least help clear up any slime that spawn overnight while I'm AFKing in this area, like, right next to the farm. At the least, after my next AFK session, I should be able to come back, check the chest, and I should have, like, at least a couple slime. There. That'll be nice. And so that brings us to today's comment of the day. Now, for today's comment of the day, it's a little bit different. There's not one specific comment because <laughs> I swear this is a comment that I see any time we're working on any building project outside over at the cherry base or if I happen to open up like the right chest or whatever. It's a comment basically about a bone meal recycling machine for the cherry petals that clog up everything all over at the cherry base. So I will start by saying, yes, absolutely need to build myself one of those. It will be very, very handy. But also, there are just, like, a lot of other random farm projects, things that I haven't built quite yet that I want to take on. I'm almost thinking about, in this next part of the series, just maybe, like, doing a little bit of farm catch-up, if you will. I know there are some other things we need to do, like Elytra, Netherite, stuff like that, but I'm kind of maybe a little bit more interested in farms, to be honest, right now. So, you let me know how you think on it. 
For example, I'm kind of thinking things like maybe sugarcane farm, maybe bee honeycomb farm that is automatic, maybe even sheep farm, automatic potato farm, villager farms, you know, farm, 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 and even more farm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's where I'm at right now, but you let me know. And thank you for all of the reminders of Petal Bone Meal Destructor. One day. One day soon. Glowstone dust. Let's see, it's been so long, I can't even remember how many blocks of the pieces of the dust I need. Oh, it's only four. Oh, okay. Glowstone block, you come with me and redstone lamp. Oh, you're beautiful. Okay, we'll take a look at you later. So, of course, the very final thing that I would like to get in here today is a small little map wall. I was imagining maybe this map wall could sit over here on this side of the build. Of course, you know how it goes. Any good map wall, it needs to be fully lit up, and it needs a little bit of, like, a proper siding. So maybe, like, dark oak or something like that. It almost looks like a person standing there. Today, I'd like to send a huge, huge thank you to my patrons. Archangel, Grand Crazy May, Medical, Boomstick, Swoopy, Loopers, Noodle, Pork, Bill, W, Tanner, B, Austin, V, Andrew H, and Gabriel Y. Thank you all. And thank you all sincerely and dearly for enjoying, watching, experiencing Project Hollow with me. It's been such a nice, fun project to take on. I had so much fun working on this project, just getting it done, getting it done, everything like that, and ha, ah, look at that. Maps look so good in item frames. Ah, we need one over at the main base, don't we? Until next time, like, subscribe, patrons get early access to the episodes, channel members, world downloads, Project Hollow, forever. Goodbye.